Hi everybody, it's Agnes and today we're doing a wonderful interview with Claire from London. Hello Claire. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming to talk to us. We're going to talk about meaningful work and wonderful work and freedom and travel and everything with you today. So <laughs> Thanks for, uh, yeah, me too. I love it. I love it. Anybody that's free in their work and they love it and they're moving around uh, to me, you know, we're so lucky in this day and age to be able to do it because yeah. our parents' generation probably wouldn't mm -hmm. have had this freedom. So over, over to you, you tell me where you want to start. Sure. Um, so I am a um, travel blogger and I do a bit of freelance writing as well. Yeah. Um, I did, I went to, I sort of did school, everything. I went to uni, I studied English literature at university and I wasn't all that sure what I wanted to do when I left. I knew I wanted to travel. Um, my dad lived in Mexico when I was, um, it's when I was a teenager and whenever I went out there, I absolutely loved it there. I wanted to live there. I'd cry every time I had to go back to England. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, so I, um, I've all, yeah, always wanted to be traveling and I love to write as well. So I did my degree and traveled a bit during my summers, which was great. Um, and then I finished my degree and I was like, Oh, what do I do now? Um, I actually, I was really lucky to, um, find a, um, what's the word? A <laughs> internship. That's the one. Yeah. I found an internship through my uni. Um, so I had, um, I went to the careers advisor and she was like, oh, there's this one internship. He doesn't take that many people. He only takes one person sort of a time. So, you know, you can try it, see if you can get it. Um, I sent him an email and then I was called straight in for an interview. And actually at the interview, they told me that they'd love to hire me. So that was amazing. Wow. Um, and then I worked there and it was actually, it was for a wedding company, um, which isn't really my thing. Um, but it was really good because it was a small company. It was a very small business and I learned so much about, uh, building a website, um, getting seen by people marketing because it was such a small business. I had about four different jobs, <laughs> um, like four different things I should be doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I learned so much about all of that, which was uh, really, really good. And during this time, I, I actually, I kind of did the internship and then I went back to the same job. But in the middle, I spent the summer in Guatemala. Um, I was learning Spanish out there and um, I was doing some volunteering with kids as well. And during this time, I started my blog. Um, and for a long time, the blog was just a way to write you know a hobby I was actually originally thinking of just using it as a portfolio um but I then um decided to um well so I was using it as a portfolio for a while and then um last year I decided to kind of make the leap into monetizing it yeah and building my own business through it um are so, you clear, do you mean monetizing the blog yeah yeah oh, so I, I didn't know I, you could do that okay yeah 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 yeah. so um well it was last year as well actually that I started freelance writing yeah um and that it was I found it pretty easy to get into um obviously because of my wedding job I already had some content on the internet that I could use as an example of my writing yeah. Um, but I used a website called Upwork. Okay. And it's yep. a website that connects freelancers with, um, with clients. Yeah. Is it so, like, Claire, is Upwork um, like freelancer.com? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few. There's, there's Elance. Fiverr's used quite a lot. Fiverr, yeah. 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 Although I don't use that, but some of the people that I work at the co-working space with, they, they do that. They use Fiverr for, for other okay. things as well. Yeah. So what I did with my freelance writing was I created a profile. It's like, you know, it's like LinkedIn, I guess. Yeah. Um, but for freelancers. And then you just apply to loads of jobs. Okay. And um, it, Upwork's got a bit of a mixed reputation. It's 
got a bit of a reputation for underpaying writers, but there is some good stuff in there as well. Yeah. And I've never really had a problem. Um, so I started applying to things um, and yeah, started doing my freelance writing through that. Mm. And, Claire, can, and I, can I interrupt you for yeah. a sec? Yeah. With, with um, Upwork, because you're <laughs> um, bidding for jobs, how, yeah. do you, how do you manage to compete with countries that are obviously don't need as much income and they're pricing mm. themselves at lower rates? How do you compete with that? Yeah, well, um, I, I think my sort of um, saving, same, not saving grace, but, you know, my sort of big thing with it is I've always had my blog. Okay. Um, which has a very, it has quite a particular tone. Um, I know I've been rejected by some, um, some customers because they, I've got quite a British humour tone to my blog. Yeah, I guess. yes. Um, and I know that I've been rejected. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> um, I've been rejected by a few um, because because they'd want something that isn't as British humor related, I guess. Um, but a lot of people do want it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like that kind of lighthearted, you know, like I've got quite a humorous tone to my writing. Yeah. But, you know, the same, you know humorous, but you know, very, I like to talk about quite serious stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so I've got like a, a bit of a mix going on and stuff. So I think because I've always had that, um, I think that's made me stand out quite a lot, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess that's probably the reason. Um, so, you know, people who go on and they want, um, especially people who say, I want an uh, expert in the travel field. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can call myself that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, like, they'll look at my, my blog posts and think, like, okay, yeah, like, she knows her stuff. Um, yeah. you know, and she knows how to write about travel as well. Yeah. I guess. And so that do you find you're getting work from particular continents or particular countries in particular because of the British thing you were saying? Um, that's an interesting question, actually. I I have mostly British clients at the moment. Okay. Um, so I'm actually I'm not actually doing that much freelance writing. Well, I'm doing bits, but I'm not. I'm cutting down a bit on it at the moment. So I'll, I'll go into my blog monetization in a minute. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I I don't really necessarily think so. I I mean, I guess I've had a few more British clients who like, you know, who want sort of that kind of writing. Like yeah. I've had a few people where I've wrote stuff for teenagers. Yes. I guess because sort of engaging stuff. Um, or yeah, people who say, oh, we want someone who's, you know, got a sense of humour, who's, who's got a, you know, got a certain style of writing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess I sort of, I've had a, some clients have noticed particularly, particularly that, but then I've also got, had quite a few clients who on the travel side of things, um, like I've had jobs, um, proofreading jobs for travel publications. Okay. Generally when, um, it's, if it's written by someone where English isn't their first language, yeah. they'll ask me to proofread it and, you know, sort of go over it to make sure everything's, the grammar's all right. Yeah. And stuff yeah um so that's i guess they've seen that because of my travel experience but it's also handy because i can i can say i've got wedding experience and i've wrote about a few other different things as well so i've got wedding yeah. experience i've got i've got wedding writing experience <laughs> <laughs> yes i've been divorced four times and i can really write about it <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah i can say i can say i write about weddings i write about uh, i've done a bit of food content so i can mention that um yeah. yeah a few other things as well so yeah so that's kind of where i started off with the kind of being able to have freedom i guess you know yeah the yeah. uh, writing um but um i wasn't free enough <laughs> Yeah. Um, I get it's, it's addictive, isn't it? Once you yeah. sort of really do this on your own, you're like, well, maybe I could do this on my own. Maybe I could yes. do this on my own. Yeah. And I've always wanted to be able to run my own business, like be able to do everything on my own. Um, so as I say, I had my blog, um, and I um, was, you know, writing quite a lot on that, but I wasn't making any money off it. I was using it to advertise 
my what I did, but I wasn't using it to um, you know to actually make any money off it. Yeah. Um, and I was in Bali last year, just over a year ago, and I was in a co-working space. Um, which is a, um, it's like an office where um, freelancers go into, they pay some money to, to work there and they go in there and, um, you know, work at their computers and stuff. And it's, it's really awesome. Yeah. Um, and I was in a co-working space there in Changu. Um, and it's a hugely popular place for like digital nomads, like loads and loads of people out there, including some like other bloggers who I got to know a bit on groups, like Facebook groups and stuff. Okay. Um, and I just, it was a really good space because there were a lot of conferences and there were a lot of like, yeah, like conferences, meetings, that sort of thing. So I le- I quite quickly learned how I could monetize my blog. Yeah. Um, and I started sort of implementing strategies to do that. Um, at, at first, it was quite slow, which is to be expected, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it, as it sort of picked up and picked up, I, um, you know, I, I wrote, I, yeah, like I'm making sort of decent money from just my blog now. Yeah. Um, so can you first, explain, cause I don't understand, yeah. I, I monetize my YouTube channel yeah. so, and I know it's done on views and watch time, mm-hmm. and, but how is, mm-hmm. how does it work w- with a blog? How do they pay you for monetizing that? So, um, I just joined an ad company called yeah. Medium Line. Okay. Um, they're a really good ad company, but you need a minimum amount of, um, users like views a month to yeah. use it. Yeah. Um, but they're really, really awesome. Um, and they only do very sort of specific targeted ads. So there's no like nothing really like inappropriate or just annoying or anything like that. They're very specific to what the, um, the viewer like normally looks at and stuff. Okay. Um, yep. And they're very sort of compact as well. Like I really like them. They look very neat because there's Google ads as well. Yeah. But they, they, they'll take you people at any, like you don't have to have a minimum threshold, but they're, re- I think they're really ugly and they sometimes say like, they sometimes have really like inappropriate stuff and they also pay peanuts. Okay. Um, so Mediavine are really good. So I've just started with them. Yeah. Uh, I'm earning like, you know, a good few hundred dollars a month with them. Oh, good. Um, that's, a, I mean, that's money for nothing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Ooh. And that's, that's with, my, with my hits at the moment. When they, like, as they go up, the pay will go up. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's good. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's serious money. Yeah. Um, and another way is affiliates. Yes. Um, so, like, most online stores have affiliate programs. Most, like, yep. booking, like, booking.com is a good one. Um, <laughs> Amazon, 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 Amazon yep. which one of my biggest life's bugbears is that it's not used as much in Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> it's true. because, um, I, my, my audience is 40% Australian. No way. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I've got, I've got so much Australia content, but I just wish Amazon was big there because if it was, if it was as big as it was in the States, I'd be earning so much with them. Um, yeah. But it is, out, it is out there now and it's, I think it is increasing in popularity a bit. Mm. Well, they've just, I think in the last, well, when I left, they were building some big Amazon thing out in the west really, of Sydney and it was, okay. so I don't know if it's opened yet, but yeah, yeah. They've, they've started to finally come over. We'll see, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. I just, yeah, I just think it might not take off in the same way because of um, just like how much outback is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You just couldn't Amazon Prime things to some places in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, yeah, Amazon are a good one. Booking are a good one. And there's all sorts of things. There's a couple of other, like, um, do you know Wild Earth? They're Australia. No. They're a camping store. No. They're a camping store. They, I, Because I write quite a lot about road trips in Australia and camping in Australia. Okay. They have a yeah, program that I earn a bit of money from. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, there's a few other things as well. 
Um, another way people make money is um, through there's there's sponsored posts, which is, yes. is you know that's quite popular on YouTube as well, isn't it? Um, but the that, the good money's there is when you've got like a really big following, I guess. Mm. Um, and also, like, I'm quite conscious about not advertising products that I don't like and everything. Like, yep. It's like yep. A recipe for disaster, isn't it? Exactly. Um, so I haven't done too many of them, but I'm hoping as I grow, I'll get some more offers from some like companies that I align with a lot. Yeah. Because um, I I have a focus on sustainable travel. Yes. Um. So I only want to do things that sort of promote sustainability. Um. So yeah, I'm quite picky about those. Yeah. Um. And the last. The last main way people do, I mean, there's so many ways people come up with the most random things. Yeah. But the last main thing that people do is um, selling their own products or selling their services, yep. which is yep. another similar to YouTube thing, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't do this at the moment, but I'm planning on, I want to make an ebook actually about um, traveling Australia on a budget. Yeah. Um, because when I was in Australia, I... Um, yeah, I didn't spend that much. I didn't spend much money at all. Yeah. I bought a car and then I, I free camped and, yeah. you know, all I really spent money on was petrol. Yeah. Um, it was great. And so I want to write an ebook on that and sell that on my blog. And I also, um, I've just started offering travel coaching. So Ooh. let's see how that goes. Cause I get a lot of questions about, um, yeah. people who've seen different contents like people who ask questions about like, you know, driving around Australia or also because I have a few posts about Guatemala and Mexico. Yeah. I get questions about, about them as well. Um, yeah. and China as well. Cause I've been, I've got quite a lot of content on China. So, yeah. um, yeah. Cause there are a few more like, you know, I guess sort of Guatemala, China are a bit more unusual places. Yeah. I get sort of, um, a lot, quite, quite a lot of questions about that. So I'm going to um, start doing sort of Skype travel coaching, which is the lovely. What yeah. a great idea. Yeah. I'm, so, sure you, I'm sure you get a lot of questions about the hairy, weird um, spider snakes and other <laughs> creatures when you do, when you. Oh, so many, so like many. In Australia, people think that there's like hairy spiders everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it makes me laugh. People even me think too. that. Like, the snakes going down the main streets of Sydney. <laughs> I know, and, and kangaroos boxing. Because, because of course, because yeah. someone put up on YouTube two kangaroos fighting in the suburbs, you know, in front of people's houses. People think that yeah. that's everywhere. Well, I'll, I'll just say now, I drove around the whole of Australia. I did see quite a lot of snakes. By quite yeah. a lot of snakes, I mean about sort of ten, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But none of them, none of them ever attacked me. I didn't yeah. meet any man-eating spiders. No. <laughs> No. I was perfectly safe. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it's funny, funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so great. I, like, it's just. I mean, it's just so wonderful. One to be doing a topic that you love, but then also mm. to be using it to travel yourself. How long have you been traveling and moving around that you've been financially able to do so? Um. So I left the UK in July two thousand and sixteen. Okay. Um, and I have been home since. I was home for five months at the start of this year. Yeah. But so I left and then I went to China for two months and then I was in Australia. It was actually two, it was two years ago today I moved to Byron Bay. <laughs> ah, Byron's <laughs> beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I worked, I worked in Byron Bay. Um, I worked as a, just a cleaner in the host, in a hostel yep. and managed to save up quite a lot of money doing that. So that actually funded my kind of traveling around, um, Australia. Yep. Um, and then it was a year ago when I was in Bali that I started sort of doing this freelance writing and doing all these other like little, like sort of implementing, uh, monetizing strategies onto my blog and stuff. Yep. Um, and that's when I sort of, you know, started my own business, registered it as a business, etc. Um, and yeah, and then I went home in uh, December. Yep. Um, and for Christmas and stuff, and I was home until May. And wow, you would have froze your boobies off at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was 
time of year to be at home. <laughs> Not the best time to be in the UK. Oh my god! I'm actually, I'm actually going back at the the last two weeks of October, which yeah. I just decided to miss the lovely summer. And I know, yeah. yeah, I'm going back then too. So we'll be um, yeah. we'll be there at the same time. We'll be there at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at, um, least, at least we work from home, Claire. We can crank up the heater and, you know, I usually, yeah, don't, sometimes don't I order my groceries online because I'm too scared to go out. <laughs> don't have to leave the house at six in the morning and no. car and oh, that's <laughs> horrible right. stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then in May, I went to, uh, I went, was in Asia for a little bit, actually. I, I went to Vietnam, Thailand and China. Yeah. And I flew from China to Mexico, which is where I am now. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. You've been in Mexico for a while, haven't you? Mm, I've been here since June. June, since the yeah. Start of June. yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm, I've got an apartment here and everything. Yeah. Uh, and I, um, I like, I'm part of a co working space here. Yeah. So I like, um, yeah, so I, it's a similar thing to the one in Bali. Like I pay a monthly fee and yeah. I go and like use their internet and everything. And it's so nice. Like all of my like really good friends yeah. I've made my working space, which is really awesome. Uh, you prefer, yeah. you prefer that than working from home? Mm, yeah. I really struggle working from home. I get oh, very okay. distracted. Yeah. Um, I like being in an atmosphere where there's other people working around. Yeah. Me. Yeah, um, so it's a nice compromise, I guess, from working in an actual office. Yeah, so, and they're usually sorry. quite creative. There's that we work. Mm. I keep getting it. Um, I think they advertise it on Facebook. I keep when I'm on Messenger, they've got the we work. Uh, yeah, co, uh, spaces for, and they just look so amazing. They're just so yeah. so creatively interesting, yeah. and I mean, they all have a kitchen and everything too for you to go and yeah. make coffee and everything too, don't mm. they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mine's got a full kitchen with an oven and everything. Oh, so you um, can make like a full gourmet meal while you're... <laughs> yeah, people do, people do. Um, and yeah, no, it's awesome. There's, they have um, artists, artists in residencies. I think that's yeah. What say. Yeah. What is um, that? What's that? Arti artists in residence. That's a bit of a tongue twister. Artists in residence. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Artists yeah. in residence. And they um, stay... So the, <laughs> the co-working space... Um, is also kind of also a hotel it has three hotel rooms oh and the um the artists will stay in one of the hotel rooms for like a month say and then they'll do some artwork yeah and so there's like kind of like a big mural out the back which is really awesome um and sometimes they'll stay in like some like musical types will stay and they'll do a um like a concert which is really cool nice. um yeah, there's stuff like that, which is, is really good. Um, it's very like, you know, definitely gets your creative juices flowing and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. so nice to be around, you know, other creative people because you are this, what we do is very solo, like unless yeah, you're doing yeah. interviews or stuff like that, you are in your own pod a lot yeah. of the time and in your own mm. mind working on mm. your own weird things. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> And it's interesting hearing what people do. People I do know. so many things. And I, always, I say this to everyone because I get asked this quite a lot. People say like, oh, like I'd love to do what you do, but I don't think with what I do, I could do it remotely. Yeah. And I say you can do almost anything remotely. I know. Um, and like is, any office job. I have to say, and, and I will, you will probably confirm this, we didn't know what we were doing. And we still, mm. a lot of the time, don't know what we're doing. Like you, yeah. people think because you're doing this and you're two years down yeah. the track, you're flying by the seat of your pants pretty much all the time. You try yeah. some things, it doesn't work. You try other yeah. things, it works well. And you think, I had no idea that was even that great. You're yeah. constantly surprised by, and then you find, you, you know, you, you, you don't know how to do a lot of things. You've got to go on YouTube, go on Google. How do I do this? How do I do You're constantly yeah. looking up how to do stuff because you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, another thing I'll say is that there are so many support groups nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in some amazing uh, blogging groups. Yeah. Uh, and if I have a question, normally I ask it, it's answered within five minutes. Wow. <laughs> Because there's, there's, you know, there's industry experts in there. There's people who have like the top travel blogs. Yeah. And 
you know, and they're out, and it's really nice. Like they're out there giving advice, mm. um, you know, and it's it, like, we don't just talk about strictly, you know, it's not strictly for help. Sometimes it's, you know, to, to, it's, sometimes it's like jokes that only like us will get, mm. <laughs> or, you know, it's sort of talking about different traveling and stuff. Cause we know we have a common ground. So it's really, really nice. And it's a really supportive community and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really awesome. Um, and yeah, there's, there's just, there's just so, I don't know, it's just a whole other world, I guess. It is, it you is. <laughs> People say to me all the time, like, what are you doing? Like, what oh, are yeah. you doing on Facebook? And I'm like, oh, I'm just like talking to my blogging friends. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's really cool. Um, and yeah, like, I've obviously got a travel blog. Um, but there's another thing, you can blog about anything as well. Yeah. If, people who like to write you can blog about anything, anything. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There's, there's mothers that blog about their children there's people that blog about health um there's people that blog about health issues that they've mm. overcome there's yeah. i mean it is this sports i mean dancing how to paint whatever in watercolor like it's endless it is really yeah. endless mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's really like, it's, it's just very eye opening, I guess. Yeah. Um, because you can do, you can talk about something that was just this kind of little thing that you liked and then you, you, you touch upon the global yeah. people that do like the exact same thing as you and yeah. it puts you all together. It is so, I just still find that so wonderful that we can group ourselves according to our interests. It's yeah fabulous. definitely definitely um and oh yeah i was gonna say as well with the sort of mindset yes thing, so when i was at university i like i said i was kind of like oh i know i want to travel i know i want to write and i was sort of umming and ahhing about what to do and then someone said to me as a girl i used to work with she said to me oh you could be a travel writer and i was like I was of this mindset then I was like oh like that's the dream but it's very hard to break into and that's what everyone tells you everyone says like the travel the travel writing field is you know they say you can't go break into it like it's yeah it's not you know it's it's not a you have to have a like very high level of expertise to to know it yeah um and I actually find found when I went traveling and I was sort of meeting more people and I was like showing people my blog and stuff. Cause I, I started doing it cause I was like, I love writing and I want to write about my travels. I want to remember them. Yes. And I was showing my blog and you know, I was getting all these compliments and stuff. And I was like, I, I can do this. <laughs> like, yeah. What, you know, what, what's stopping me? So that was kind of where it all started, I guess. And mm. you know, I know you talk a lot about the law of attraction and this was before I even like knew anything about it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. And then I could. All of a sudden, I, I could. <laughs> it's a whole mindset thing. It was like, I just completely changed my mindset of it. And I had, I had, you know, doubters. I still have doubters. I still have people being like, so where are you getting your money from? People I know. Still, yeah. I'm like just a rich, rich kid living off my parents or something. Yeah. Um, well, people think that. And oh, yeah, true. yeah, and it's not true. Yeah, yeah it's your own people money. Ask me, people ask me when I'm coming home and getting a real job <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and but I just I just went on with it, you know. And it's just it just goes to show, doesn't it? Having a positive outlook about things and just you know not not letting the naysayers get you down. <laughs> and also have following through on that intense desire of wanting to be yeah. free. When you yeah. want to be free and you want to travel and you think, okay, I don't want to just travel four weeks a year or two weeks mm. a year because different countries have got, you know, yeah. I, mean, I know the yeah. US has two weeks a year. Australia's got four weeks a year. Britain has how? Um, six. So we're quite good, really. You're four weeks? Six. Oh, six. Yeah. So that's so we're, we're the best. Yeah. 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 But, but so, yeah, I just, yeah, I, I, I've never really liked staying in one place. Me um, mm. I'm not a big fan. Like, I like London as a city, but I'm yes. from South London, which yeah. is like a bit meh. Um, <laughs> out, out in the suburbs and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just wanted, you know, since like my dad was in Mexico, I wanted to go to different places and, you know, yeah. see some 
see some more things and stuff. So um, yeah, it just it just clicked. Yeah. I guess it was really? just like. I just suddenly knew that it was the right thing to be doing and yeah yeah mm. I guess that was that was the sort of aha moment yeah and you yeah. had I mean how old were you when you started because you had this hit you quite young yeah um I guess I was I guess I was 23 when it first kind of all started panning out yeah um, when I first started to get into that mindset yeah um, and I guess I was 24 when I started kind of properly properly doing it and everything yeah, it's great. Um, and yeah. I mean I only graduated uni at 22 so yeah. <laughs> I didn't miss all the show no, um, it's great it's great yeah I went into it quite quickly but um I just yeah I couldn't be um I don't think I could be going up to a job in London and oh my anyway. god when yeah. I think of that tube in London in winter, uh, it's dark in the morning, it's wet, it's cold, and you've got to leave your bed to go out in that? No way. I just don't know how people do it. It is, I give them credit because it's hard. I mean, I used to struggle doing it in Sydney and it wasn't even, you know, I mean, winter's here, it gets to probably seven or eight, so it does get yeah. cold, but... We're not talking <laughs> snow and, you know, I just think, I can hear, when I'm laying in bed in London, I can hear my neighbours getting out of because I hear them shut their doors because I live in a, an apartment thing yeah. so I hear the doors shut and I can hear them push the lift button and I think I can I just think oh I just mm. feel for them I just can't mm. and I think I've got to have that moment where I'm grateful mm. for the fact that I'm still laying in bed and mm. I can start at 10 a.m if I want you know yeah definitely, definitely. I used to do it too I used to do it too and you don't forget it once you've done it you don't forget it um, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I love the freedom as well. The only, um, <laughs> the only thing that I do struggle with sometimes is um, persistence. The yeah. more persistence, you got to be strict with yourself sometimes. Yeah, I I've guess. got, I've got the other problem. I don't know when to stop. Yeah, yeah, I've got That's that. Good. I've got that problem. Yeah. Like, like yesterday, I, I had to go for a massage because I gave myself mm. such a headache because I pushed too hard for two days. Really? And I ended yeah. up in bed for, for, you know, I was in bed for about 14 hours going, oh, because yeah. I had a headache. I pushed, just was yeah. on the computer too much, just doing too much. And I smashed myself. And I, I have yeah. that. It's like both are extremes. We've got to yeah. both learn to go into the middle. I do that sometimes as well. And actually what I find helps, and this isn't like, wouldn't be for everyone. And I, it's, it's great because you can like kind of start when you want to start and finish when you want to finish. But I do find that working, like having an eight hour work day yeah. does help, you know, yeah. having that little bit of structure. Just obviously doesn't have to be rigid. I don't have to, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm actually quite an early riser naturally. Okay. Um, so um, if, if I am um, actually planning next year, because I'm going to have a load of work to get done, I'm actually planning on going somewhere where I don't really know anyone. Yeah. And having like, just a month where I, like, I mean, I'll do other stuff as well, but pretty much like just work as much as possible. And I'm going to try and start getting up at five. <laughs> wow. Um, but this, I mean, this will be in like somewhere in either in uh, Latin America or, or somewhere in Asia. So it'll be nice and warm. And nice and warm, warm. Yeah. <laughs> Easier to get up early when it's hot. That's for sure. Um, but I do find that that helps. Like I find if I, if I get into my co-working space at nine, I say, okay, I'll work till five. If I get in at 11, I say, okay, I'll work till seven. Um, yeah. I do find that that helps quite a lot. Um, how with how often are the, how long are the co-working spaces open till? So my one at the moment is open from nine till eight. Okay. Um, the one in Bali was open 24 hours. Wow. Um, I did, I did a couple of times do an all nighter in them. <laughs> um mainly mainly because i was um i was one of my ridiculous money saving tactics i was like yeah. i'm i'm not gonna pay for a hotel tonight i'm just gonna work all night <laughs> um but it's you know it's, it's great to have that flexibility you know it is yeah and it does save you two nights accommodation it's worth yeah. it isn't it yeah if you, if you do yeah. it once a week you save you know like <laughs> one night's accommodation yeah, yeah and, when, and the thing is claire when you get started you you're so on the edge of I don't know when I'm going to get paid and this is my survival at stake yeah. you do go through those you know yeah yeah 
I mean, I used to stay in the cheapest Airbnbs in London, you know, and I just thought, oh my God, you know, but that at the time when I started, I was, you know, I had two clients a month. I was making, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month off my coaching. I couldn't Mm -hmm. pay for an expensive Airbnb or even a a decent one. I was staying in the cheaper ones because I needed to make sure my business was surviving. So yeah, you go through those, but when you look back and you make more money, you go, oh, I've done it. I'm now staying here. So yeah, I'm in a kind of middle phase now, I guess. I'm, um, I'm kind of, I'm not, uh, well, I'm earning enough to live here. Yeah. Uh, here it's very cheap. Yes. Um, so if I was living in London, if I was living in Australia, I'd be struggling yeah. to live. Yeah. It, it, um, it is and, expensive. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. 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 And I'm also like, I, well, I mean, I'm earning it. I, I'm earning enough anyway, because I'm earning enough with, with my freelance writing. But if we're just talking about blogging, pum, I'm yeah. earning enough to live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm having to do the freelance writing as well to be able to pay for flights and yep. um, money back into my business because I've just had a whole redesign and everything. Yeah. So I'm still and I, a, a professional designer did that, so I'm still paying him yep. off. Um. So yeah, to do things like that, I'm um doing my freelance writing as well. Yeah. But yeah, like I'm I'm okay. I'm in the I'm in the you know I'm in fairly comfortable zone, but I definitely yeah. have been in the not so comfortable zone yeah. as well. Me too. So, you never yeah. forget it. You know, you never forget yeah, it. I yeah, it's I know. Good. But the great the great thing with um with what I do um is and I get I guess with what you do as well um is that the the money's kind of unlimited once you it get is. going. The money's kind of unlimited. It is. Uh, so it, I. I know a blogger, they're a couple, they're really, really good. Um, They only started their blog three years ago, I think. They now make 20, over $20,000 a month. $20,000 a month, yeah. And there's another blogger who's been going a little bit longer. He does things with different websites as well. I don't think this is all off his own, his main blog. But from doing what he, he do from doing what he's doing, sorry. Yeah. And um, he earns fifty thousand dollars a month. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Just some like, that's some people's annual wage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and some fun. people get even less than that in a, in a year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can really? I ask you? Do you charge in US dollars? Do you use the global or do how do you? Yeah, mate. Currency. Yeah. Yeah, mate. yeah. Unless I work with a British company, then we'll do pounds. Because then you do pounds. If I work with some- I work with a British company and they're paying me into my British bank account, then we'll do pounds because that yeah. just makes sense. It makes sense. But it's normally all via PayPal. Yeah. Uh, that means that, yeah, it is all US dollars, which is quite funny now because I'll um, sometimes I'll be speaking to my mum and I'll be saying, oh, this will such so-and-so dollars and she'll be like, <laughs> are, you, are you not British anymore? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. It's And you, when you're travelling and you're dealing with different currencies... Mm. And, I'm always on the current. I'm always on the currency converter, yeah. going. What is that in this currency? <laughs> I bet with how much you move around, because yeah, I, 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 um, when I was in Australia, I, um, I kind of stopped using pounds altogether, and I just started sort of doing Aussie, Aussie dollars. Yeah. Um, and then it took me a while to readjust back to pounds when I, I went back. In, yeah. But I guess you've been doing it for a while now, haven't you? Sort of going yeah. in between all the countries. So. <laughs> but you know, you know what I do, Claire. I go to um, like Ca- Co- Costa Coffee, yeah. and I'll be in there, and I'll go. Oh, I'll get a chai with some almond milk or something, and then I get my chai, and I go. That just cost me seven Australian dollars for this one <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. And I go. Well, I've just worked twelve hours. I'm having it, you know. Because but the thing is, my head calculates and goes, "Oh my god, I would never spend more than three dollars fifty in Australia. This is double the price." Like I just go, yeah, that's, ah. that's, funny. "That's that's in the UK." Yeah, that's a lot. But I think wow. because I I get you know a different. I don't get regular milk, and then you know they no. take more for this, more for that. Yeah. So like, oh, okay, that's fine. I'll, but I yeah every day. No, I, neither do I. I use yeah. Milk, so. Yeah. Yeah. But every day I make sure I leave the flat because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in I'm in North London. I'm near um, 
I'm, I'm far away from the tube, but I'm near the shops. So I walk to the shops mm -hmm. and I get off the computer and I literally yeah. sit in a coffee shop and I go for a nice big walk to get my circulation going, do my affirmations. And then yeah. I go and sit and have my chai. And then two hours later, I go back home and I will do some more work. But yeah, that's nice. So you go to the shops and you don't, you don't work then. Sorry, the, the coffee shop and then you don't work then. Sometimes I might check a bit on my phone, but I try and get, give my eyes a break from technology for that two hours. Um, yeah. and, I, and then I go food shopping because I'm in an area where there's lots of little, I mean, you know what London's like. There's a little Italian shop. There's a little fish shop. There's a little bread shop. There's, so I go into all the little shops and, you know, get my fix of getting good food and then I take it home and I daily shop. Like I'm still in that French way okay. of thinking where I daily <laughs> shop. Yeah. Um, but it is also to get me walking and away from sitting at a desk. So, yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good. good work. It's yeah. really good. It's, look, it's yeah. so, I just, what's great about this is like whether you're 20, 30, 40 or 50, you can mm. do this for the rest of your life. Yeah, no, I it's know. Like, and I like know. you said, it's unlimited. And I think that's the yeah. thing that, you know, my brother said to me quite a long time ago when I was coaching and I was doing, you know, I started doing email coaching and I was paid for that. My brother mm -hmm. said to me, you've got to stop thinking of exchanging time for money all the time. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, you've got to start creating products or services that you can sell in the night when you're in bed, mm -hmm. you're asleep. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. thought, oh, so, you know, since then I've created four courses yeah. and since then, yeah. you know, Google yeah. pays me every month. So there's money coming in that's mm -hmm. passive income and that's growing all the time. So yeah, definitely. It, it really gives you that, wow, I'm creating yeah. stuff that yeah. is fun because I'm interested in it and it's also meeting a need. And yeah. um, it, it really is just so much fun like yeah. creating things out of your own head and people buying it. It's like, wow, people are interested in what's in my head. And it's, yeah. And it's, it's so nice. I get some such nice messages sometimes. So I have a lot of road trip itineraries. Yes. Um, so I, I drove around like pretty much all of Australia. Um, and I did an itinerary for every single one. And, um, I think all of them rank on Google now. So if you type in sort of, Melbourne to Perth drive. Yeah. I think I come up number one, I think. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, and I get some such nice like messages from people just saying like, oh, you're so, you know, so detailed. Like, yeah, just really good stuff. And I read it and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Oh, <laughs> you know? lovely. Hey, have you done so, anything on Uluru? Ayers Rock? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've done um, a couple of posts. Um, and I did, um, uh, it was featured on my dry, um, my Darwin to Adelaide drive as okay. well. Yeah. Una oh. is amazing, isn't it? It's such a, well, no, I a, haven't. I've done the whole of Australia and I've never done the middle yeah. and I was thinking I might never go, done the middle. and I was sitting there thinking, okay, I don't want to go in December, January, it'd be too hot. If yeah. I go, I yeah. need to go before I head back to London. I thought I might just scoot over there for four or five days. My yeah. Airbnb's booked for a month. But I was yeah. just looking at flights and looking at um, which hotels to stay in. And they've opened up this mm -hmm. new one called the, Cam the Lonely Camel or something. No, the Lost Camel. Okay. It's brand new. They've opened right. it in July. And, um, okay. yeah, I thought, oh, I might have a little look. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you should, definitely. Yeah, I, um, so I did the, the road trip uh, last year, this time last year pretty much. Nice. Um, so I was there at the end of September last year and it was, it was pretty good weather then actually. It was pretty comfortable. Well, that's like right now. I mean, if I book, I'd be going at the end of September. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah it was pretty good. Um, we were camping, yeah. uh, me and my friend. Um, and <laughs> she, I was, I was in the car. I was all right. She was in a tent and she got very cold. She said in the night. Oh yeah. It, you know, the temperature the drops. Yeah. Yeah. But, I think but in the days it was and it's, it's an amazing place. It's such a spiritual place. It's obviously got like huge Aboriginal significance and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's really special. It's a really sort of inspiring place and you feel very at peace mm -hmm. there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking, look, I'm looking forward to it. I just got to, yeah. I mean, I love camping, but I can't really camp because I need Wi-Fi. So yeah. uh, <laughs> and enough. trying to Fair get, enough. you know, the company that I'm with is good in big cities, but I don't know how good it's going to be out at Uluru. So I, um, yeah. I'll probably stay. Is that, is, that, is that Telstra? 
No, it's a Maya sim. Oh, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic because they don't lock you in. That's why I went with them. Right. You don't, you don't oh, cool. Because you know how all the companies lock you in with the phone? This one doesn't yeah. lock you in. And you can, if I go sure. to, the, to the UK, I just pause it and then I come back and I restart it. So it's fantastic right. for that. But um, yeah, it's kind yeah. of, I'm not sure if it would be that great to piggyback yeah. off the personal hotspot mm -hmm. when I'm in the middle of all the room. <laughs> Telstra was really good, but yeah. I don't know about anywhere else. Telstra, because there's um, there's yeah. a little town there. It's yeah. um, it's hilarious actually. It's the fifth biggest town in the in the Northern Territory. It's tiny. It's tiny. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 oh, Yulara. Yulara. That's what it's called. What's it called? Yulara. Yulara. Okay. Yeah, and I'll they have they had good Telstra signal, but I don't know about any others. Yeah. So, I will have yeah. a look. Nice, nice. Oh, so good. This is so exciting. Look, this is one of my absolute favorite subjects in the world. Just people being yeah. free <laughs> and having meaningful yeah. work on some subject that's interesting to them and how they've gone mm -hmm. about getting to the place where they earn money from yeah. that. I just, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. wonderful. It is just so wonderful. Yeah. And more and more people are doing it. Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely. No, it's, it's such, and it's, I have had people say to me like, are there too many bloggers nowadays? Like, is it too saturated? And I say, no, like definitely not because, well, A, there's a lot more opportunities to make money now. There's a lot more affiliate schemes. There's yeah. a lot more yeah. um, brands wanting to work with bloggers. There's a lot more good ad companies. Really like when blogging first started, people couldn't really, um, could like they, they couldn't really um, make that much money from it unless no. they were really big. Yeah. But now there's so many ways and you've just got to find, it's all about finding a niche, but quite often people's niches is just their personalities. Yes. Um, yes. That's what I found. <laughs> that's so, really good line. Your niche is yeah, your personality. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's so true, isn't it? It's that little, like you say, you doing how you write in your British sense of humor. <laughs> it's part of your personality. And that's part of why you get yeah. hired for certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Just my awkward British yeah. jokes. Yeah, it's good. I love that. Um, I love that when I go over to London. I just, honestly, I could stand in the street and just listen to people having conversations when I'm crossing the road at the lights. I push the button and I'm like, because mm. it's yeah. just, it's so, well, it's different to Australia and for me it's different to France. So I just love, yeah. I love, love, love that. It's just a constant source of entertainment for me. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I never realized like kind of how like different it was until I came to Australia. Yeah. And everyone was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? We're so like when I hear the English in London compared to the English in Sydney, I go like as soon as I get to the airport in Sydney, I hear, hey, mate, you're right. Yeah. And I just go, oh, what? Like, I'm just so not used to that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and it just makes me laugh. It's just so, it is, it's so we're, you know, we are from, I mean, Australia is English. That's how it started, mm. apart from the Aboriginals, yeah. of course. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's so got watered down over the years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really funny. Yeah. Well, any last words, dear Claire? Um, I think, I think I've said everything I want to say, really. Just, um, yeah, I hope this is an inspiration to, to yeah. some people. Yes. And yeah. Can I put the link to your blog down below? I'm going to put yeah. the, link, the link to Upwork down below, Freelancer, because yeah. a lot of people don't know where to start with stuff like that, and those organizations are great. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, before I upload this, send me the links via whatever you want me to put down in the description, send me the links and I'll put it below because I'd love to have yeah. a look. At, I'd love to have a look. Sure. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. I've also, I should mention this very quickly, actually. Yeah. Um, I also have actually just started a YouTube channel. Um, but it's only got one video so far, which is me explaining who I am. Okay. <laughs> um, but I actually, I wanted my YouTube channel to focus on um, different, like a few, like different things, like n travel as well, because travel is obviously a big part of my life. Yes. But I wanted to focus on um sustainability um what was my sustainability mental health and travel that was the three things that i wanted beautiful. to focus on beautiful yeah well so, hey, if you I'm ever gonna... want someone to interview i'm happy to hop on and give you a hand oh for sure yeah 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 absolutely 
Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, yeah, like I say, I've, I've only uploaded one video saying, saying who I am and what I want the channel to be so far. That's, um, a, that's the, you've taken the first step. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I know, um, yeah, I'm going to carry on sort of, you know, uploading that as well. So that was sort of a work in yeah. progress. Because <laughs> yeah, you could do, you could do videos of where you are and talk about it live mm. while you're in different locations yeah. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many, there's so many things, you know, yeah. so many, I've got some ideas for sort of speaking videos that I want to do, but also, um, yeah, like travel, travel things as well and stuff. So yeah. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for today. I, look, I just get such a rush of energy when we talk about this stuff because it's so much fun. It's just like it just makes you go, where else do I want to go? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. And I can take my laptop and work from there and then I can go and have a swim or I can go and have lunch with, you know, the locals or I can have a, whatever the yeah. local drink is or the local food and it's just so much fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. I'm in Sydney yeah. today. I'm in Sydney um in the inner part of Sydney, the inner West. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm in an Airbnb that I stay in quite regularly, but I've got my mum with me today. So I thought I'll do my interview yeah. with Claire and then I'm taking her to this really good um, sort of eco-friendly cafe. So we're going there now after oh, I finish the awesome. interview. Yeah. Awesome. So it's just, yeah. that's part of the day and then I'll come back yeah. and I'll do some more work. But yeah, it's just good to be able to duck out and go and do yeah. those things. And it's nice to be able to spend time with relatives and stuff, isn't it? Like that's a, great thing about it as yeah. well you know? and people in different countries that you wouldn't normally be able to see as mm -hmm. often you can that's a you can make that a priority i can see you yeah. in london i can see you in mexico i can see you and i'll be back and yeah, yeah it's yeah. lovely lovely to connect yeah, yeah. yeah all sure. right claire well okay. you can, can you stay on the line for a sec you and i'll say goodbye privately yeah. but do you want yeah. to say goodbye to everybody yeah bye everyone <laughs> bye claire bye everyone i'll see you in the next one and i'll put all the links down below for those of you that want to check out anything that we talked about in this interview